HBC Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series, Conversations with our Distinguished Leaders of Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Today, our esteemed guest is Morehouse College President Dr. David Thomas. Uh, first to discuss with us uh, new details uh, about the transformative gift to the college uh, from billionaire philanthropist and, and uh, tech exec Robert Smith. So, Mr. President, first, an honor to be back on with you. Uh, last week, you revealed new details about the gift uh, that will come to the college uh, and specifically its student support initiative uh, for uh, the elimination or reduction of student loan obligations. Talk about those new details and what it means to you and what it means to the college. Well, uh, the new details are that um, since Mr. Smith made his um, initial commitment we have developed a uh, an initiative or program called Student Success that essentially allows us to invite other donors, our potential donors, um, who've expressed interest in uh, Mr. Smith's uh, gift to reduce debt and deal with issues of affordability. But this program will allow them to do uh, is to support the college around the efforts uh, to, uh, you know, deal with the affordability of our college education. And for example, we've had people express interest in addressing issues of affordability, but um uh, not wanting to necessarily do so in the same model that Mr. Smith is following, with where he re- he relieved the debt of an entire class, regardless of the occupation that they're going to go into. We've had some people express interest, for example, in addressing the debt of students who might go into uh, high social value creation occupations but low pay at the entry level Mm -hmm. an example is teaching Uh, this program would allow us to customize you know various ways to address affordability to the donors wishes uh, and also to the donors capacity uh, for contribution but at the same time, have that donor feel like and realize that they are connected to the broader effort to address issues of affordability that Mr. Smith's gift uh, really has been catalytic for. Talk about the, the the nuts and bolts of a gift like this, because I think that people who are laypersons on higher education would assume, oh, Morehouse got $34 million. That that changes everything. And in a lot of ways, it does. Uh, from public relations and marketing standpoint, certainly. Uh, but because this is a, a, a targeted gift for a targeted reason, how much education have you had to do with some of your alumni stakeholders or just external groups that support Morehouse, educating them on what this actually means, that th- there are restrictions that come with this, yeah, this isn't a new gym that we're yeah. getting. <laughs> what is what? What kind of education right. do you have to give people to to understand it? Right. That's a that's that's a great that's a great question and a great point. And we have had to educate um, various members of our community and our constituency about the fact that while this gift will be given to the college to administer it is restricted to eliminating the student related college education debt for the class of 2019 Uh, the money will come to the college and then we will release that money to the various institutions that own the debt service of each of our students, whether it's Sally May or various banks 
no check. The other thing we've had to educate people on is no student or parent will actually get a check mm-hmm. with their name on it. The money will go directly to the institution and extinguish their debt. Mm-hmm. So our students and their families or their parents are beneficiaries, but they're not recipients of the money. Right. And uh, of the $34 million, we expect that with the exception of uh, a small grant that's included to support research, longitudinal research, which we are imagining now as a 10-year study on how this debt impacts these in, these individual students or this debt relief. Um, other than that, which is about $400,000, by the time we get to the turn of the year, all of the money will be dispersed. Um, and so Morehouse will not be sitting on a cushion of $34 million. It's, it's so important to know because people people see that and they've seen that video. Right. <laughs> and they think, oh man, Morehouse got it made now. Um, right, so right. It is important to outline that, but, but even more so for another story which uh, hasn't made the rounds but it's certainly a conversation um that i know you know the the, the college wants to have um and a lot of folks that, are, that love it dearly want to have so a letter was was circulated recently uh that talked about you know faculty concern um about furloughs uh financial issues uh certain staff layoffs uh support for you know cost of living increases is that something that you can affirm uh, came to your attention, and if so, what yeah. what do you expect that the administrative response will be, and how will the the college and its leadership yeah. work with the faculty body to address some of these yeah. issues? Yeah, here, very, um, you know, there's a there there are a number of complexities whenever you start to talk about uh, finances, but I'll, I'll try to keep them to a few simple points. Um, if you look today at the landscape of higher education and liberal arts colleges that never moved in the direction of uh, creating alternative streams of revenue to tuition, the model of simply being a tuition-driven college is under great pressure and we can look across the landscape of higher education and we see liberal arts colleges making major cuts um, and in some cases uh, even uh, losing their accreditation or going out of business. So what we've done at Morehouse is really look at our financial model and uh, identified the fact that we are serving a population that has decreasing ability to pay the full sticker price of Morehouse's education. And there are adjustments that we didn't make after the recession of 2008 that have gotten our cost structure uh, out of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the process of engaging in some cost reduction measures as well as some revenue raising measures and have decided that this year we really need to get that equilibrium in place. Uh, and what that's meant is our having to impact um, salaries through furloughs and a reduction in our benefits and also some cost reduction measures. We're also looking at a series of revenue raising measures 
uh, that have to do with our facilities and greater utilization of them in ways that will bring revenue to the college. Uh, we're looking at developing new programs that will attract new audiences, adult education, uh, online certificates, and ultimately uh, what I hope will be uh, degree programs that are targeting uh, populations beyond just the bachelor's students who come and spend four years on the hilltop here at Morehouse, as well as um, intensifying the efforts around fundraising for general scholarships and dollars that help us, that, that allow us to increase our capacity in areas like technology, uh, infrastructure, et cetera. So, so we're engaging in a set of measures. I think what the good news is for us in the approach we're taking or the positive is uh, we're not laying off faculty. Uh, the positions that we are going to eliminate are positions that uh, we know that we can absorb. Uh, they're not student-facing positions, so we've been very careful not to do what many institutions have done, where you do an across-the-board, you know, what I call the cheese slicer approach, elimination of positions, and then you eliminate critical positions that impact the quality of student life. We're not doing that. But we are taking a set of measures to to uh, to create more financial equilibrium, and we think doing that will help us uh, put the college on a very positive uh, fiscal trajectory.